Hello everyone, this is Hank. Um, I'm back. Today we are going to talk about um, the um, shoot menu number three. Um, and we're going to discuss the last four items, starting with the auto lighting optimizer, right? As you can see. Okay, um, so auto lighting optimizer is a I consider it as a filter that is applied to the camera when you activate this. Okay, the default is standard like that. Also, the default is with the info checked. There. Yeah. Okay, so so the auto lighting optimizer as a default doesn't work with manual mode or bulb modes. Okay, now you have a choice of turning the manual mode and bulb mode on by clicking on the info. Okay, so now the manual mode and bulb mode also works. What exactly is auto lighting to op optimize? You may wonder. Uh, what it is is the camera, okay, is going to take a picture, and is going to modify the tone curve. Okay, uh, so all of the darker area is going to lighten. Okay, to increase the dynamic range. So to improve the picture, now the the cost of that is like the picture is going to look a little bit less contrasty, but it kind of gives you more dynamic range, and then you can always darken it, brighten it a little bit harder. So that's the number one cost. The number two cost is that because you bumping the dark area up brighter you usually generate noise even at ISO 100 so you have a little more noise now another disadvantage would be if you are using exposure compensation or automatic exposure bracketing or the flash okay this thing is going to try to bump up the dark one so so as you do the dark part of the exposure compensation and the flash and all of that the camera is going to fight with you, so you don't get as much effect for those. Okay, and um, another problem is that if you are shooting um, sports or birds in flight, and you need the high uh, burst rate, this thing is not very high, but it's say five frame per second, you are not going to get five frame per second. You are going to get something like four because of this because it's resource intensive, right? So, and the, the last one is that it's only applicable to JPEGs anyway. Okay, so if you download and use the RAW, it's not doing anything for you. So I highly recommend that if you don't use JPEG, turn this one off, okay, which I always do. All right. So, what about highlight tone priority? That's another filter. Okay, this filter, if you can think of it as the opposite of the auto lighting optimizer that we just talked about. Okay, instead of bumping up the, the dark areas of the picture, this highlight tone priority bumping down the highlights you see what it's doing so so all of the bright area is going to be muted so that the gradation the changes are not as significant in some cases like you you take a picture uh, during sunrise or sunset or something to that effect right or even a regular picture where you have a sky in the ground 
there's there's significant contrast and, and difference in, in light. And this high light tone priority is going to help preserve the bright areas and uh, prevent it from being burned out. Okay? Now, I um, highly recommend that you disable this one um, unless it really helps you in some way. The the biggest dis disadvantage of this one is like when you activate it, either enable or enhanced, okay, you are going to lose that ISO 100 and the ISO 50 for that matter. So the, the 50 and the 100 goes away. The minimum ISO that you can set is 200. So that's right off the bat. Because this thing messed with the tone curve Okay, so it will create more noises, especially in the darker areas. Okay, so, so you have more noise. Sorry, this thing kind of goes away, go to sleep after a while. Okay, so um, interesting thing to note about this one, unlike the auto lighting optimizer filter, this one is applicable to the raw files. So the raw files record uh, this data. Okay. Um, okay, there are two options. One is enable. Okay, the other one is enhanced. So the difference is that this one is basically standard. Think of it as like a 100% uh, application, right? So D plus 2 is more than 100%, so enhanced. So it's like 150%. So so if you use D plus and, and the effects is not good enough for you for a particular picture, and then you can crank it to enhanced, or vice versa. If you, you have it set enhanced and... It doesn't look right, and then you decrease it down to enable or disable for that matter. I um, I normally, for really high contrast and, and high dynamic range, I usually use automatic exposure bracketing I, um, or, you know, manual bracketing. And I, I took, I would take um, multiple pictures and I post-process and merge them and all of that. But if you're not doing that, um, you might want to consider highlight tone priority. Play with it and see and decide for yourself. Personally, uh, losing ISO 100 is just too much to lose. I, uh, I'm unwilling to do it. So this is out, okay? Um, so my default for this is be off. Okay, metering timer then. What exactly is this? Okay, uh, remember in um, a previous episode or maybe two episodes back when I talk about that um, that uh, star button, you know, to freeze the exposure and you have eight seconds to recompose. Okay, the reason I mention eight seconds is because that is what I had set and it is default. Default is eight seconds. So when you can change this to 30 minutes if you want to, okay? So so when you change that, it affects two things, okay? The, the first one is that asterisk button, the, the freeze thing is, for example, if I set it to one minute, it's going to freeze uh, the exposure for one minute instead of eight seconds, so it gives you a whole lot more time to play with it, right? So, so if you need more time or less time, you go in here and you change. That's one. And the other one, it, here, let me give you an example. I changed this to four seconds, right? Okay, I go over here, right? So I'm, I'm going to measure, do a measurement, right, a, a metering. And it display, right? Okay. That display is going to go away in the time that I set here. I'll prove it to you. I'm going to do the counting. So four seconds, right? 
1,002, 1,003, 1,004. It goes away. Alright? So you set it 8 seconds, it's going to display for 8 seconds and then gone. So that's what the metering uh, time is set to. Right? I'm going to set it back to 8 because I think 8 is about just right for me. Default. Okay, exposure simulation. If you don't know about this, then you're in luck because this is really useful, at least for me. Okay, what is exposure simulation? Exposure simulation simulate what you are going to get when you take the picture by looking at the LCD or the viewfinder. So whatever you change, okay, any changes that you affect the screen, the screen is going to show it. No, I mean, any change you would affect the picture that is going to be recorded is going to be shown on the LCD or the in or the viewfinder. All right? So, um, so I'll give you an example. Okay, um, to show you a good example, it's best to switch over to manual mode. Okay, in manual mode, right, um, I, I have some random uh, setting here and um, turn out to be two stops too low, right? So I'm going to decrease the um, the uh, the aperture down. No, not, not the speed, the aperture. One, two, three, that's one, one, two, three, that's two. Okay, so now, now I'm right on, right, according to the metering. And as you can see that, it's a lot brighter than before. Okay, so now if I decrease it some more, you are going to see that it's going to be even brighter. You see? So basically, my changes here is reflecting on my display. And basically, what I see on the display is what you're going to get in your picture. Okay, so the advantage of exposure simulation is that it simulates what it's going to look like in your final picture, and it's pretty close. All right, so that's a huge advantage. So look what happened if I turn that one off. You probably guessed already. I can play with this all day. The screen is not going to change because it, it shows me what it thinks is the right exposure. So it looks perfect all the time. I can change this thing all day. Nothing's going to happen. So this is not going to help you, right? Because with it on, immediately you can tell that, hey, you're too dark and you're too light, and stuff like that. Now, if you don't have it, you, you can't tell. So, so this thing is a huge advantage. Okay, you notice that there's a third option. So let's quickly explore that. Okay, so you have an option like, okay, you only show the exposure simulation during the depth of field preview. Okay, now the RP doesn't even have a preview unless you program one for it. I have a separate video to show you how to do that. But so if you program that, you can choose this one, and then you can um, you can view it through there. But um, this one definitely keep it enabled at all times. Most important thing um, for your ability to, to take better pictures to have this thing turned on. That's the single most useful feature in my opinion. And so you see what you get. And that's wonderful. All right. All right. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you very much for watching. And I know that my video is fairly dry and, and I tend to talk too much. So uh, I'm going to stop now. Thank you. Have a good one.